Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Legacy is a futuristic novel based on the author Robert Maxim's visions and previous sojourns into this and other worlds. One man's incredible journey through lifetimes as far as a million years, his blunders and triumphs, worlds and places where these journeys took place. Legacy highlights advanced scientific and spiritual concepts written in lyrical romance prose. Most of all, Legacy is a powerful love story, deeply rooted in the man's unquenchable, unquestionable, unquenchable, desperate search through the vastness of time and space for his one and only soulmate. Read and experience incomparable truth. Learn how things live on other worlds and what they believe in. Most of all, yes, see the evidence at his website. Robert Maxim, the author, experienced several sleep time visits to other worlds as a child, witnessed countless alien craft. These visions continue to date in both wake and sleep states. He studied piano starting at age three, concert piano, but changed his calling to science following his visionary experience. Legacy episode series by Robert Maxim. That's the focus of tonight's program. And for episode number 41, back with us, Robert Maxim. Robert, welcome back. It's great to have you on the program. It's great to be back, and thank you, Rick. It is a pleasure having you here. And unquenchable is difficult with new bifocals, so I apologize for that <laughs> in, in trying to get through that. We have so many questions. We'll explain during the course of the program how you get questions to uh, to Robert directly, or I can be the uh, intermediary and get them to him. Let's pick up with questions uh, after the last program. We did about a month ago, and it starts off: How do we activate and feed our, our higher self? It's a real important question to start it off. I'm going to get that out properly. How do we activate and feed our higher self? Well, that's what life is all about. Um, but we must remember that it's the higher self that activates us. Uh, it gives us a mission on earth and guides us to it. The higher self feeds us, but only if we will listen. Now, to do this, we must learn to tell the difference between ego and humility. That's very important. Then, once we know who is who, the higher self or the lower self, we must choose, of course, the higher. The lower self always feels good. You know, it's the pleasure self. So we must be careful with that. Humility and sincerity is the higher self. It will add unto you just what you need. Now, for those who are probably listening to this for the first time is, what is he talking about? The lower self is what we can call our subconscious. It's our automated tape drive. It's everything that is memory, desires, and things that we have accumulated over, over time. The higher self is our more enlightened part of, of us. It's our guide, and Jesus called it at one time, the still voice within, the small still voice. Uh, other folks call it our guiding angel. Um, and overall, it is, it is what supports our, our mission in this world. And it's what sometimes knocks at the door and says, don't do that, do this instead. That's what we must learn to listen to, not necessarily what we want but how we must serve, translate, and teach that lower nature of us. That's what a higher self is doing, and that's how it activates us. I hope that answers the question because there's so much there. That's such an important question and, and answer that yeah. uh, really has a lot of information. Uh, I'll slow it down a little bit. We jumped into it to get started with the questions. Uh, Robert's website is rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. Great information there, a wealth of information there. You could go back 50 times and still miss a lot of good things there. By the evidence I talk about, you will see that there. Everything he says, he's backing up with evidence on the website. And you, uh, you can leave questions there. You can leave questions at our website, thisweekinamerica.us, that we get to Robert. And uh, uh, for the last couple of years, pretty much all of, our co all of the program has been answering your questions. We have so many backed up, and we're trying to get to them as quickly as possible. Next question from a listener. As a Catholic, I go to confession, and I'm told my sins are forgiven. Is it that simple? 
It is true. Uh, your sins are forgiven, but not by the man that said so, but you. Only you can forgive your sins because God does not condemn. So knowing that they are forgiven is really of no value if you don't do anything about it or don't know how to forgive yourself. You have to learn from experience and do something positive instead of dwelling on the fact, boy, I sinned, I made a mistake. You know, you beat yourself down. That's not what God wants you to do. And when that same sin tries to reenact its payload on you again, what are you going to do? Are you going to ask for forgiveness again and again and again? Yes. You know, children seem to be better at avoiding sin than we are. They seem to get the point real fast, but we don't seem to do to do uh, the same. At least they are willing to change and not repeatedly say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I can't handle this. I'm sorry. If a child can't do it, why can't we? We should, we should consider that the whole purpose the whole purpose of confession is to us. Confession to somebody else is really not necessary. It's not called for. It's not even biblical. You know, you should confess your sins to yourself. And Jesus said it best. Go into the closet of your own soul. Pray there. And that's where you need to find your answers. You don't need to go before someone and tell them, well, I sinned and I did this. And honestly, uh, rattling off sayings or, or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, what do they call it now? I forget the word, but uh, um, penitence. Yes, yes. You know, penitence. i got to remember <laughs> these things. But going to penitence is not fixing the problem. The problem is fixed when you realize what it is. And when you decide once and for all, I'm not going to do that again. You know, my mom, when I was when I was little, she said, don't touch the stove. It's hot. Guess what I did? Yep. Poof. <laughs> OK, I, I found out the hard way. You don't touch a hot stove. Did I ever touch it again? Well, not really. So when you find out what you're up to and what you're trying to do, even uh, the old saying that men are best convinced by reasons they themselves discover. You have to discover that reason for your actions. And it's up to you not to condemn yourself. No one is condemning you but yourself. Remember that. Remember that in order to overcome your negations, you don't rattle off penitence deal with it. Interesting answer, and I hope that goes uh, a long way in answering the question from the uh, the listener, and we appreciate uh, that question and all that we receive on the program. By the way, we talked before about Robert in October was having uh, a seminar in Las Vegas, actually seminars in Las Vegas extended, uh, what you did, two days, I believe there, or, or two seminars, it was, uh, it was plural, I know you did more than one. He's so successful at that. He's back and will do it again for two days now, November 30th and December 1st in Las Vegas. I'll give you a number now and again at the end of the program for uh, ticket information. If you follow Robert on Facebook, you will get all the information there as well. 702-239-4308. He's playing, I understand, an amphitheater this time. So they expect a large crowd. It's going to be there for two days. 702-239-4308. And rumor has it, and I haven't confirmed it yet, that in uh, January he'll be opening for Celine Dion in Las Vegas. So that will be something to uh, <laughs> something to look forward to. Obviously, you're able to. Uh, I mean, people are, are are hungry for this information, and really able to to, to touch a, a lot of life. Just briefly, when you were there in October, I'm sure it was quite gratifying and satisfying because you actually were were able to help some people with some great questions and struggles that they're going through. It was back-to-back, -back. I remember, <clears throat> uh, back in October, for four straight days. I basically slept only two hours a day. 
it was just back to back consultations and people wanting to talk and uh, people needing help and questions and answers. The conference itself, the conference was extended. Uh, it was really a labor of love, and uh, I've never enjoyed uh, activity as much as I did then, because I felt that people really were they were they were not only hungry for the information they were soaking it in they were putting it to practice that's oh, that's the best thing and well, i yeah. had slide after tribe after slide of evidence presented to them on all aspects of theology and science on health on past history uh this is what people need I they guess that's the key the when form. you're saying they, they put it into effect. It's one thing to sit there and to get the, gather the information and go, wow, that's life altering, and then not do anything with it. But the fact that they are going to apply it is, is very rewarding. I'll give you that phone number again for information, and you can, of course, find it at Robert's website. Uh, I'm sorry, at Robert's uh, Facebook page. Back to questions, and we've talked about astral travel numerous times in the program. And I guess maybe sometimes I, I take. Uh, uh, for granted that people fully understand the concept. This is pretty basic. Explain astral travel. Exactly what is that? A term thrown around a lot, but what does it actually mean? Well, astral travel is basically the extension of your consciousness to another place in time. It is done, though, at a higher state of awareness than your physical mind. It's like a mental transfer, except the part of your mind that does, does so is in a much higher plane than your physical essence. So there are a lot of people that think that they have astral travel and they'll sit down and they will focus, they will concentrate and say all kinds of letters, words, whatever, sounds. And they say, okay, I'm astral traveling now and I'm seeing this and this and this. It doesn't really work that way. Uh, and I know the question is going to come, how do you do it? Uh, I don't ask for it. Uh, I let my higher self take me, bring this to my attention, make the transfer. I don't consciously try to do it because I could fool myself. Uh, I am not a master, and I am not about to be doing things that my higher self has not condoned me to do. So it's not to get into any trouble with lower astral forces or your own imagination. It's always best for your higher self to go ahead and say, knock, knock. It's, you're going to go here, sets it all up, does it's all the arrangements, and there you go. So, again, astral travel is not done consciously. It's done out of your consciousness. All the information we talked about, and I say that because you've got basically all the bases covered at your website, rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N.com, uh, information in depth on, on what Robert talks about on the program. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly and get to Robert's website and take advantage of that information. Next question, is there a devil, something that tempts us to do evil? Oh, this is a, this is a good question. I get asked this quite a bit, and uh, people are surprised when I say that devil, no. Uh, tempting obsessions, though, yes. And actually, our own lower self is what I would call a, uh, an emeritus member of the demonic club. Mm. So, <laughs> to, to, to keep evil away, you only have to look inside to yourself and deal with that. And these dem demons are going to melt, melt away before your eyes. Yeah, like this, there's a song that says, I have friends in low places. Yes. Uh, yeah, there are, there are a lot of friends in low places, but who calls them home? We do. Mm. It, even okay. Jesus gave us, gave us an example. He said, your, your battles against potenti potentialities. And he likened the soul to a house. And he says, well, you might have all these bad thoughts and bad souls uh, in, in your house, and you cast them out. You clean the house up, and now it's nice and shiny. Well, this bad spirit comes back and sees that the house is 
nice and clean and it's being remodeled. And it says, oh, I love this place. Well, it goes back in, but it calls its buddies along too. So moral of the story is, yes, you have to clean your house, but you always have to be aware that evil is always with you because evil is what you have. And this goes back to confession. We always have to be confessing to ourselves how we feel, what we're thinking. That is the evil that we have to worry about. We don't have to worry about some other evil creature putting uh, stumps so that we fall on the road. It doesn't work that way. Those stumps are there because we allow it. Robert Maxim, our guest in the program. The Legacy Series, the episode series, you'll find the information at Robert's website. Find information as well and can order by going to, uh, to Amazon and the usual places. Uh, fascinating, entertaining read, all based on uh, experiences in this life and past lives. You'll find all of that in the Legacy episode series. Uh, next question from a, a listener. I read a newspaper story about artificial intelligence discovering dozens of mysterious cosmic signals. Are they, are they signs of alien life? Should we read that into that? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> as far as I know, aliens communicate using higher frequency, non-light speed, non-phase technology. Okay, what that means is we communicate using electromagnetism which goes up and down up and down a waveform and both the electric as well as magnetic um, components of that wave they're all in sync right okay and it's traveling at the sp uh, speed of light going down the road well aliens don't use that method of communication not only are their frequencies higher than ours but their technology is beyond light uh, they actually transmit signals through semi-dimensional states, higher dimensional states. And also, something to keep in mind, altered time zones. Not every solar system in the same time zone. So the odds of us achieving world peace are higher than anyone with this technology that we have picking up an alien signal. I know that billions of dollars are being spent to put up all these uh, satellite dishes all over the planet uh, to pick up a SET, the SETI organization, for example. That's all phased technology. They're not going to pick anything up. They can't. It's like talking two different languages, uh, like somebody sending smoke signals and, a, and another one using a cell phone and a cell phone tower. It's that different. Wow. So it sounds good, and we would like to believe that's true, but it's not. Not really. Okay. Well, it was a great question. Sorry to shoot you down, but that uh, that that ain't happening. So uh, we we want to set that straight. But good question. Uh, questions yeah. that'll you know a lot of people have and think, uh, uh oh, now we're going to prove once and for all they exist, and we find out the technology gap is so great that no, that's that's not the answer. This is a fascinating question here. Does the past still exist? What happens to the past once it has passed us by? Does it still exist or does it go out of existence? And unless we're taping a program, that's interesting because what we talked about the last question, that's now the past. Is, does it still exist? Yes. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only Ooh. be altered. Uh, your past, the past that you carry within yourself, is like... A photo film that you keep exposing with new pictures. So imagine that you take a picture today of, say, a, a garden, and you take another one a couple of days later, and you overlay it on top of the first one. Okay, it looks a little different now. And you overlay it, and you overlay it. Well, believe it or not, the first picture you took it's stored in the infinite. It did not go away. What you have done with that garden is now viewed it in a future state. 
your present state is it's a future state now so all of those energies that created that one event didn't go anywhere so I know what people are thinking time machine yes it's possible everything that is in our sequential universe contains all of the pictures thoughts and feelings that you've ever had compacted into a recording database and guess where that is it's in your soul it will never vanish moreover mm. it is it is being broadcast at all times throughout infinity forever as a creative intelligent expression that others will tap into and react to now your local copy of these memories those you can change daily as you learn and adopt new life lessons that's what you call your consciousness so your subconscious are all of those memories from the past that are that are stored away so this is why you can remember oh when I was 10 you know I remember doing this that energy did not disappear if you got into a time machine you go, go back to when you were 10 and see that event we have to remember that in, let's say that the universe or time is this ball this is where everything is taking place outside of this dimension you are actually surrounding the physical dimension on all levels so you can point to the present right here you can also point to the past right here you can point to the future here and as far as you're concerned in this dimension there is no time that is difficult to conceive that I have experienced and it blew me away when I when I felt it I can only imagine how that would uh, would have an impact on you uh, you're listening to this week in America uh, Robert Maxim our guest on the program his website is rgaten, G A E T A N dot com. And uh, Unarians United, another uh, website that has great information as well. Link, link onto those by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. Question Why would the government hide this information? This information we talked about uh, on past programs where things come out that they do not want to, uh, I would say, alarm the American public so they, uh, they don't uh, share willingly at least that information. The question goes on, though, and says, has the government used any of the technology that they've discovered? Because a lot of this, as you just talked about a couple questions ago, in the past, uh, you know, all of the uh, uh, technology being so advanced, has the government spotted this? Do they sense it? And have they used any of the technology they've, they've seen? Oh, absolutely. Uh, for those who are listening who have, in times past, looked to the skies, and they have seen a triangular black looking uh, UFO up in the skies traveling around that is called a TR3B it is made in the United States it is copied technology of course the government doesn't necessarily want everybody or anybody to know these things they don't want to know about the technology they have I'm going to show some interesting information when I'm in Vegas in November and December I will actually show video that proves that this is true. Uh, but there are many, many secrets, uh, folks. It's not just the fact that we have created UFOs. There are secrets that we are in cahoots with alien civilizations already. We have more than UFO technology in our hands, trust me. There are aliens living on this world. We host them, we allow them to, to live here. Uh, it's kind of an information trade program. Information comes in. Sometimes people are traded. Yeah, abductions. Matt, it's, it's part of the deal. Uh, you also have specific um, political actions that are taking place. Those are secret because they're involved in what's going on here. Uh, medical research, medical, shall we say, 
uh, or hidden medical technologies. That's also part of this plan. If you start thinking about everything that could possibly be hidden, all the affecting your health, affecting what you eat, affecting what you listen to, even the music, even the clothing that you wear, uh, everything is manufactured, everything is controlled so that you get one world view to keep you there, to keep you consuming, to keep you feeding from a hand and not going anywhere. So, a word to the wise, you have to verify a lot of a lot of the stuff that you, uh, shall we say, enjoy and support. You got to think through it. Is that wise to do so? You never know who you might be backing up. You may be playing right into the hands of these hidden programs. Robert uh, Maxim, our guest on the program. Uh, a few minutes left. I have no idea where the time has gone in this program. It's moved by very quickly. Uh, probably uh, another question, then we'll go through how you can get in touch with Robert and myself. Not that I'm going to answer anything, but I will pass it along to Robert to answer on the next program. Now, this is interesting and, and something I guess is, is a fairly a common question if you listen to what Robert's had to say in the past and talks about government involvement, do you actually have sources in the government, resources or informers that will work with you and share pictures and information? Are, is there any inside information that, uh, that you're getting still? I know you worked for the government at one point, so that gave you access to, to I would assume, a lot of information. Do you have government sources? I've had sources through the years both in and out of the government and both in this and in other countries as well. Uh, these sources I cannot describe or willfully compromise for everyone's well-being. The answer is yes. Okay, and I'm not going to have you divulge those, but that's interesting because you are spot on with so much of the information, able to back it up with, uh, uh, with evidence at the website. Uh, I'll mention at the end, I said I would give this phone number again. Robert will be back in Vegas for two days of seminars uh, at an amphitheater there, this, uh, November 30th and December 1st. The number to call for information is 702-239-4308. Information at uh, the website. What is the uh, your Facebook information there? How do, is that uh, Robert uh, Maxim or what's the, uh, the name of Facebook? Uh, the page is Roberto Gaetan and the number one. Okay, and uh, we'll have that uh, so you can you can follow him that way. I follow you, but it's it just automatic. I don't really fully understand exactly uh, what it is. It pops up. We became friends at one point uh, a number of years ago or lifetimes ago, and we're still <laughs> we're still there and exchanging this information. If you go to the website uh, r g a e t a n dot com. You'll see all this information there. You can also get in contact with Robert, leave a message, and we'll talk about that on a, on a future program. Or you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You can link on directly to Robert's website. Leave a question as well, and we will get that to Robert to, to answer in future programs. Robert, it is always a pleasure. I'm just delighted at the uh, success you had with the, uh, uh, the past seminars that you did in Las Vegas. Delighted you're going back. I know you've got some, uh, some foreign visits after the first of the year that we'll talk about as well. Good luck with everything. Have fun in Vegas, and uh, we'll talk again with, uh, within the month and uh, answer some more questions. Absolutely, and I want to assure everybody, gambling is not part of that trip. <laughs> yeah, when you say let the chips fall where they may, you're not necessarily making a, a gambling reference at that particular point in time. So uh, go to Las Vegas uh, and then uh, hit the, uh, the amphitheater to get the information uh, that Robert's going to share with everybody. That's it, This Week in America, our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Join us next time as we'll have Robert back and more of your questions. Stay tuned, we're back after these messages.